I really do think we've turned the corner. I think that uh, businesses are growing at a somewhat slower but much more sustainable pace than they were before. Housing has definitely turned the corner. There are pockets of weakness, but I do think that we're in a much, much better economy than we were in 2012, certainly. Well, I've been surprised that housing has rebounded as strongly as it has. I think that's a good thing, certainly, and I find it ironic that some people are talking about a housing bubble once again, because in certain sectors of the country, housing is still weak. But in general, I think the recovery in, ho recovery in housing has been incredibly bullish because it has such trickle-down effects into so many different industries. Part of the reason that housing is recovering is because interest rates remain low. And the reason interest rates remain low is that there are pockets of economic weakness, namely unemployment. But overall, I think the biggest surprise for me has been the strength of the rebound in housing. One of the surprises, I think, has been the continued investment in technology. When 2008 financial crisis hit, we saw basically the cash dry up. People were not investing in the stock market, they were not investing in businesses. That has changed quite dramatically and I think technology has been on the forefront of that and really seen the most inflow of cash and the most inflow of R&D investment, which longer term creates jobs and longer term is very bullish for the economy. I think the energy sector is key, particularly in this particular area, in the greater Philadelphia area. You are blessed with the, the new shale technology and various different types of energy technology that I think are going to make a huge difference in the economy. They're going to create jobs. They will help with energy independence on a national basis, which is incredibly bullish. If we can become energy independent within the next decade, 10 to 15 years perhaps, I think that bodes incredibly well for the economy overall. I think individual investment advisors on the local level are doing a very good job. It's the greater overall Wall Street that, I, that I'm referring to. I still think that they don't realize the power of the individual investor. I still think that to a certain extent it's viewed as an insider's game by the individual investor. Um, take a look at the flash crash, take a look at um, the rapid trading, the flash trading that goes on, the dark pools. Just the name dark pools is an indication that it's not open to everybody. A lot of people feel that the dark pool trading is front running. Okay, well that doesn't create a level playing field for the individual investor certainly, and it creates the impression of an insider's club. And then when you do get insider trading going on and, and there are prosecutions, it reinforces the idea that Wall Street is not a level playing field for the little guy. And I don't use the little guy in a pejorative way. I mean for the individual investor, for myself, for my husband, for my kids. And when I talk to people, I find that they don't view Wall Street a place to put their money. They would much rather start their own business, invest in themselves, invest in a local business. They're using their money in a different way than they did, say, 10 or 15 years ago, when everybody went into the stock market, because that was how you grew your money. That's not the way they want to grow their money anymore. Now, that may be a negative for Wall Street, but I think it's a positive for the local economy. I think it's a positive for innovation, and I think it's a positive for the business community. However, if we are going to have a strong financial system, you cannot alienate the individual investor. That's a very tough question. I think there is a lot of uncertainty in healthcare. I think it's going to take a while to work out how the health exchanges, depending on what state you're in and, and how different states decide to adopt the, uh, the health care initiative. I think businesses are going to take some time to work through what works best for them. And it's an incredibly difficult question because of the diversity of types of businesses and sizes of businesses. Do I think that people will keep their employees to 50 and under to avoid certain penalties or having to bring in certain programs? Perhaps, on the other hand, if the economy becomes strong enough so that you can justify bringing in more employees and justify that extra cost because your profit margins are rising faster than your costs are rising, then I think it becomes less of an issue. But I'm not sure that we'll know that for a year or so.